Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to go through my predictions for IGCSE 0580 Cambridge and the paper four. Before I get started, again, please check out a random shout out to Abdallah Tutoring. Um, you'll see the link just over there. No, just over there, like that. And it's, he's a really great guy and he's got some great content out there. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so like I did in my previous video where I predicted my paper two, I'll go into the same order. So I'm gonna pick up my sometimes topics that come up on paper four, and then my often topics, and then after that my almost certain. And do make sure you check out the entire video because I go into some details on some of the comments that I've made. First of all, these are my sometimes topics. They have appeared less than or equal to six in 13 papers over the last two years. There's an extra paper, because India does it in March as well. So you can see many of these topics are paper two topics, essentially. So coordinate geometry, rearranging formulae, Venn diagrams, uh, vectors to an extent as well, definitely indices. Um, so most often a paper two, but can appear on a paper four. And what you should do with your teacher after you've done your paper two, rush to your teacher, say what topics have appeared, and then by a process of elimination, you can work out what's more likely to appear on the paper four. Right, let's move on to the often topic. So these are my often topics, so you can see they don't appear every year, but they appear very, very frequently. The first one to mention is transformations. It's a classic paper four topic where you need to know your reflections, rotations, enlargements, and be able to describe your transformations. That's really, really important. Uh, equations and inequalities, I was quite surprised this appeared as much as it did on paper four. However, it's generally distributed equally between paper two and paper four. Often it's a long question from my experience of different algebra skills. So it'll get you to factorize, it'll get you to solve an equation, it'll get you to solve an algebraic fractions kind of equation. So often a long question and many different algebra skills there. Next is my trigonometry and Pythagoras. This often appears in a 3D context. So they'll give you a cuboid or a triangular prism and you'll need to work out angles going from one vertex to another. That's very, very common. Functions, when it does appear, is a big question, and it will include inverses, composite functions, algebraic fraction equation using functions. So something like f of, open brackets, 2x plus 1 equals 15, and you have to work through a quadratic, something like that. So make sure you revise functions, even though it hasn't appeared every year. When it does, it's a big question. Circle theorems. I've seen this more on paper two than paper four, but it can again often be equally distributed between the two papers, often linked in with polygon calculations, so work out an exterior angle. They'll put that into a circle theorem question. If you're aiming for the very, very top grades, then differentiation is something to revise. As you can see, it doesn't come up every year. When it does appear, it's towards the end of the paper. You'll need to take a cubic or even a quadratic and find out the stationary points. So differentiating, equaling to zero, and working out which is maximum, which is minimum. So if you want to get those high grades, please revise. And sequences, though it doesn't come up every year, it's usually in a very similar format, which is good. So they'll give you a table, you need to fill in some values, and then from there you'll need to work out linear and quadratic nth terms. Make sure you revise that. Okay, and my last part is the almost certain category, which I'm sure you've been waiting for. So the first thing to say here is that volume, area, similarity, so anything to do with finding areas of 2D shapes, surface area of 3D shapes, volume, they often give you the formula underneath. So say you want to find out the volume of a sphere, they will give you that. Um, make sure you can also do these water flows into the tank problems. So they tell you that it's filling up by a certain amount. Um, yeah, by a certain amount, and then you have to work out the volume that's left, something along those lines. So if you want to get those top marks, you need to revise those kind of questions. Probability comes up every year, uh, often a standalone question, but often they integrate it into either the statistics, which you'll see below, or a Venn diagram question. So they'll give you a Venn diagram, you'll work out some values, and then they'll do some probability afterwards. Probability does appear in a part of a lot of questions. So you really need to be comfortable with probability questions in different contexts. So make sure you do that. Uh, statistics, again, it's a bit like the paper two. So they give you a cumulative frequency diagram, working out median and quartiles, draw a histogram, work out the estimate of a mean, so finding the midpoint times your midpoint by frequency. Box and whisker diagrams come up a couple of times as well. Just make sure you know your statistical diagrams and how to draw them and how to work with them. 
What I found interesting is the plotting equations came up 12 and 13 times. So what they'll give you often is a cubic or reciprocal function or a power function, and they'll get you to fill out a table of values and then plot that on a graph, so physically putting the points on and joining them up, and then they'll get you to combine that with okay, a straight line, for example, which you also have to plot, and then find the intersection points. That seems a quite a common question on the 0580 paper four. So make sure you're prepared for that. One of the key differences between this course and 0607. Percentage calculations, they love to put as the very first question or the first one first question or second question, and it includes the usual things with percentages. So percentage change, percentage profit, percentage loss, compound interest, working at a percentage of something, reverse percentage change, and sometimes working backwards through a compound interest problem. Sine cosine rule is no surprise. This is on the paper four. It lends itself to extended questions, often linked with bearings. The diagram is always, almost always given. And you need to work out some various angles and sides. So know your sine cosine rule, all the different versions of it, and then apply that to a bearing kind of situation. And the last thing to mention, this is probably the most nuanced here, is quadratics. So know how to complete the square. That comes up directly sometimes. You need to have to solve quadratics with the formula or with factorizing. What they often like to do is give you a speed distance time problem or a geometric problem, and that leads into a quadratic. Okay, so that'd be like three or four marks. And then from there, you have to solve the quadratic, find the correct solution that fits with the situation given. So make sure you're able to do that. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully that's helped you sort of shape what's going on. Uh, I had a request to leave this PowerPoint uh, in the description, so that's what I'll do. And any questions, then by all means, put something in the comments. All right, bye-bye for now.